So you might be in the market for a four core, eight threaded CPU, and you've probably been eyeing off the Ryzen 3 3300X, and that's a CPU that represents great value for money. We've actually taken a look at it in a separate video. I'll put the link for that up here if you wanna check that out. But we've got that in today's comparison with a B550M Steel Legend against the i3 10100F. And you're probably thinking, 10100F, that's not out for sale. And I know, and don't ask me how I got this thing, just came in and I'm doing some testing, but it performs exactly like the i3-10100. It just doesn't have that iGPU portion on board. So if anything, might be an indicator of what's to come in a few months if you're in the market for a cheap i3. Though regardless, we're testing that with a B460M and the uh, B460 does have that 2666 megahertz memory limitation. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But then we've got the final contender in the mix here. This is the i7-4790K, and I picked this up on a used bargain for 140 Aussie dollars with 16 gigabytes of RAM and also a one terabyte hard drive. So if you find a good used deal, you can't turn that down because the performance figures I'm gonna show you are pretty impressive for this old 4790K. But let's roll the intro and then we'll talk about the gaming benchmarks for you guys more in depth and get to a conclusion. Today's video is sponsored by Dashlane. Dashlane is something that I've come to use a lot nowadays as I use more and more websites and of course, having a tiered password list, I don't wanna give out my tier one important passwords to any other website that I don't trust. And there is a lot of them, whether it's an e-tailer that you're using for the first time, Netflix, Stan or Reddit, I feel comfortable remembering my tier one passwords and then after that, I let Dashlane do its magic. It can auto-fill and remember passwords, shipping details, but it can also save you hassle and auto-generate complicated passwords and if you are used to using very easy to get style passwords then all you have to do is download Dashlane, log in and remember your master password and the rest is history. Since it's a cloud-based service you can use it on any system without saving or copying anything and just put that one master password in. As for safety all your passwords are encrypted safely and there's also a built-in VPN too. Now if you use the link dashlane.com slash techyescity then you can get Dashlane completely free on your first device and if you decide you want to upgrade to a more premium option, then you can get 50% off using the link and the coupon code in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So I showed you guys one quick benchmark in the intro, but let's roll through all these numbers here and then tally up what is going. So first game, we're gonna pull up Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And what we can see here is that the 3300X and the 10100F do pretty well against one another and they beat out the 4790K. But once we overclock the 3300X, this is even on the B550M Steel Legend. So you can overclock this on a B450, get some similar performance if you have a decent cooler. It started to outperform everything here. But the 4790K, once we gave it that better memory, the 2133 megahertz CL9, it did put on one spectacular show here where it was saying, hey, 10100F, it left that in the dust. I mean, it didn't leave it in the dust, but still, for a six-year-old CPU, that's a very impressive feat. And then we're moving on to the F1 2019 results, and we can see here that the 4790K with 1600 megahertz XMP, out of the box 4.4 gigahertz, it does fall behind the 10100F and the 3300X. Now, they were trading blows once the 3300X was overclocked, so the i3, did very impressive in this game. Now for the GPU, we're testing with, as you see in the graphs, it says up the top there, 5700 XT, because I feel like if you're getting a four core, eight threaded CPU, you're not gonna be going out and buying a 2080 Ti. It's just way too much of a discrepancy in pricing and realism, I guess, where you guys have pointed that out in the past when I've tested this with a six core, but at least with a six core, I could see that happening. I could see you getting a new six core and maybe a used 2080 Ti that's just going on some fluke deal. That is a possibility. But with a four core, I don't really see that happening. But anyway, that aside, the 5700 XT is still a very powerful GPU. And we can see that in this graph here where the frame rates are extremely high, 1080p, high settings. And the 4790K does benefit the most once you start giving it some overclocks, and in this case, some tech yes loving, which we did. We had to do this to get better results because the 4790K, I couldn't overclock it at all out of the box because it just, it had that crap thermal paste on board. So we had to delit it, give it some uh, Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro, and then we uh, came back 
and it performed even only 200 megahertz higher. It was still getting pretty hot as we can see with those temperatures, but it wouldn't actually use that 4.6 gigahertz in Cinebench R20. But we'll get through the gaming benchmarks and we'll talk about all these extra itty gritties more in depth because we've got here Call of Duty Warzone and here we saw the Ryzen uh, 3 3300X score the victory in this title that the i3-10100F and the 3300X out of the box were trading blows and the 4790K did benefit uh, from that overclock and it did show some extra performance figures. And then moving over to Fortnite, this one is a bit of an enigma. I'm looking into this because the Ryzen 3 3300X benefits greatly when you give it more voltage because I did, I guess, overvolt it for these tests because you just want to make sure that overclock works. And so what we saw here was 366 FPS and then moving over to the 10100F, it left it in the dust. And then the 4790K came out overclocked and it came in second place, which was actually pretty impressive. But in this game, I'm not too worried because it is a bit weird. I've really got to look into this game a bit closer and find out what's happening. But one thing I noticed is with these uh, benchmarks in Fortnite in particular, is when I do give these CPUs more voltage and more power, they seem to love it and the FPS shows. Out of the box, it might be some kind of voltage deficiency and that might be leading to lower FPS. That's what I'm kind of correlating upstairs here when I look at these numbers. May all just be in my head, but that's what I'm starting to see with a trend with overclocking in Fortnite. But moving on now to Ghost Recon, we saw here a victory for the 4790K. This was very impressive that this six-year-old CPU could come in and steal the show, of course, once it was overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz with the 2133 megahertz memory. Now, of course, the last game to run through here is The Division 2. We set this at 1080p high settings, and we saw here some impressive numbers, 147 FPS, just falling a little bit behind that of the 3300X when it was overclocked. So beating the 10100F and also beating itself when it wasn't overclocked, but you can probably see how excited I am for this old school 4790K because at the channel here, we focus on the used price performance. It's a big thing that I always tell people to consider because not only can you get really good price performance, but you can also get and have a lot of fun out of your older gear. And that's what I really enjoy with used price performance. I'm constantly tinkering with all these different parts while I build used PCs and flip them. And I personally just really find that this stuff is super exciting. Now, one thing we will mention here is that this Z87 motherboard that we used is really like, it's mediocre at best. I mean, look at that VRM, tiny. And it still managed to pull off a decent overclock and it still managed to lock in those XMP profiles at 2133 megahertz, absolutely fine. Now, for this memory, I got this in Brisbane on a deal. It was a ridiculously good price. I got this for in a re previous parts hunt and I'm going to be using this memory with the upcoming X58 and also X79 comparisons to see how much more performance you can extract if you have some good bargain DDR3 memory that you pick up on a deal. Now, with the new stuff, right, the B550 and the B460, we we're using CL163200 megahertz, which I believe is the most common memory you're gonna couple with both these CPUs, or even 3000 megahertz CL16. This is the DDR4 RAM in the new market that's outselling everything. So I think it's the most appropriate RAM to use in the comparison, where on the B460, we had to uh, lock it in at 2666 megahertz. Now, this is the limit coming in with H410 and B460. You heard it before it came out and it's in after the effect. But as I showed in the 10400 video, you're not losing a whole lot of performance by going with a B460 or H410. If you can get this value 3000 or 3200 megahertz memory and quickly, and I mean, it takes like 30 seconds, just drop it down to CL14 and then 36 and command rate of one. And then on the ASRock board in particular, I can't speak for other motherboards. On the ASRock budget boards here, they've got a setting down the bottom where they can optimize the secondary timings. So if you enable that, you'll get some decent performance as we saw in the graphs here and you can use the stock cooler and grab yourself a cheap motherboard and you're gonna have great price performance, especially with a mid-range graphics card or if you can pick a graphics card off the used market for cheap. Now with the B550M still legend, it's a mid-range board and so I could probably get another 75 megahertz out of this CPU, which I have done in the past, but I use that on a Phantom Gaming X, which is one of the best X570 motherboards you can get out there in the market. 
so I don't see anyone really spending all that premium on a motherboard just to get 75 megahertz. So we coupled it with a mid-range B550. We used 3200 megahertz CL16, locked those timings in for today's comparison, and it beat out the i3-10100F. Now, one thing that I'm doing with this comparison here today is that I do disable Spectre and Meltdown updates on the Intel side of things, but then I leave those patches on with the AMD testing. And the reason being is because on the AMD side of things, it actually performs better with those patches left on enabled as opposed to disabled. And then on the Intel, you see the exact opposite where they perform better with those patches disabled. Anyhow, with all that discussion and all that tech talk out of the way, it's now time for the big one, the conclusion. And we'll show some Cinebench scores here as well, R20. And what we can see here is that the 3300X does benefit quite well from the overclock. It's scoring about 2,715 points, so it's gonna be better than these other two for productivity. The i7-4790K still does pretty well for a four core eight thread. All those years later, if you bought this CPU back in the day, you definitely made a good investment. If all you wanna do is play games, maybe a little bit of productivity. And then we've got the i3-10100F, bringing pretty good value, just like the 3300X. Now, out of the box, this CPU does 4.1 gigahertz all-core. Uh, the ASRock BFB, even on default or maxing it to 125 watts, it didn't make a difference. The max this CPU could go on this motherboard, and also a Z490, when I've tested that in the past, is 4.1 gigahertz all-core, and then 4.2 gigahertz single-core in Cinebench. Now, here's where things get a little bit weird with the Z87 with the 4790K because back in the day, this was the first CPU lineup from Intel that carried the AVX2 instruction sets. So with the BIOS programming, they weren't kind of ready for the extra heat that the 4790K was gonna to have to endure with AVX2 instruction sets. And so we can see this in Cinebench when I tried to put the 4.6 gigahertz overclock in, which by the way, was absolutely fine in games. Sure, the CPU was getting a little bit hot, but it was constantly crashing out in Cinebench R20 and then throttling, once I got the overclock stable in games, it was throttling in Cinebench to that lower 4.4 gigahertz. So there is no setting in this BIOS with the AVX offset. So if you do decide to overclock a 4790K, you might just wanna be careful on what workload you're doing because if you come into an AVX2 instruction set, you may be unstable, but then you're completely stable in gaming. So that's one thing that did hold the CPU back. And I even delittered it to get those overclocks and just double check things because the temperatures were getting awfully high when I was running the Cinebench R20. So what about power consumption? And here's where we're going to be running the power consumption figures in games, because if we're testing these CPUs out in games, we should be showing the power consumption figures in games. And this is where the i3-10100F did do quite an impressive job coming in with 337 watts on average and slightly coming under that of the 3300x out of the box now i decided to test an f1 2019 when i run these tests in the future i'll just test a randomly different game but this is the second time i've seen when i've compared the same price point intel versus amd cpus the intel's giving some good performance figures especially in relation to power consumption whilst you're gaming. Now the 4790K, out of the box, 4.4 gigahertz, it's doing pretty good. But once we overclock, it does start to run away a bit, as with the 3300X. When we overclock that, starting to run away a bit with these power consumption figures. And that's mainly because with the 3300X, and even though this thing's six years old, the 4790K was practically the first time Intel started really maximizing the most out of their silicon out of the box. And so these two CPUs are pretty much tuned at their max efficiency sweet spot for performance out of the box. So you don't really have to do a whole lot more to them unless of course you're playing Fortnite. That's what the results are showing here. And now with all that information out of the way, these three CPUs here, all of them performed absolutely fine with a 5700 XT, which I don't imagine people coupling these budget four cores with anything more than this in 2020. Even if you buy these CPUs now and there's an RTX 3060 out in six months time, it's still gonna be absolutely fine with all three of these CPUs. So when it comes to buying advice, I'm going to pull up the same kind of advice that I gave in the 10400 versus Ryzen 5 3600. And that is you cannot go wrong if you buy a 10100 or you go out and buy a Ryzen 3 3300X. You're gonna get some phenomenal price performance 
for your dollar, especially if you couple it with a cheap A320B450, some 3200MHz CL16, and you just use the stock cooler. You're gonna get great price performance for the dollar. Same with the i3 10100, and if in a few months time there's a 10100F, you can get that with an H410 and some budget memory and just tune it to that CL142666, and you're gonna get some good performance. Now in terms of buying one over the other, this is where I give my advice because this is what I do personally. And that is, I buy whatever's on sale. And I've done this for years. In Australia, we constantly have things like eBay sales, retailers like Umark, Computer Alliance, they have their own sales. So if the Ryzen 5 3600 or the Ryzen 3 3300X is cheaper than its Intel counterpart, I'll go buy that. If the Intel counterpart is having the sale, and the Ryzen's not, I'll go buy that. So when it really comes down to it, if you buy either of these CPUs, I think you made a good choice. Now in terms of upgradability, you've got of course the choice on Ryzen, which I do prefer over Intel, that's the ability to overclock, especially on a B450. So B450 is looking really good, even in 2020, where AMD have flipped on their decision, they're going to allow Zen 3, that's Ryzen 4000 series, to work on B450. So that might be an option for you if you wanna get a four core now and you know you're gonna to have to upgrade after you graduate uni or whatnot, it's probably better to go with the AMD because you've got a good upgrade path. But that being said, since you're still on a four core, you're gonna have upgrade paths on both Intel and AMD. So keep that in mind. But the biggest thing to look out for if you do think you're gonna be upgrading in the future is spend the extra money now on a good motherboard that will support what you wanna to upgrade to in the future say for instance you're on a four core and you want to upgrade to a 12 core make sure you get a solid b450 not the entry level ones that won't do a good job of handling that 12 core same with the b460s get a really solid b460 that's going to support a 10 core from intel if you want to go with that route anyhow with all that out of the way we've spoken about the new recommendations now we're moving on to the used price performance now of course this here has no upgradability. The 4790K for this motherboard is the best in socket. But that being said, look at the deal I got on this thing. 140 Aussie dollars for a 4790K, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. This is good value. This is what used price performance is all about. And the numbers are showing that this is beating out the new stuff by quite a bit. So if all you wanna do is get into PC gaming get a basic, say a Snowman CPU cooler, even out of the box, 4.4 gigahertz with 1600 megahertz XMP, it's gonna do a great job of gaming even in 2020. So fourth gen in the used scene is quickly becoming what first and second gen were a few years ago because of mainly those AVX2 instruction sets and USB 3, it makes it very relevant still in this day and age. Anyhow, with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then you know what to do. Hit that like button for us. Also let us know in the comments section below what you think of these four cores featured in this showdown in today's video. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And speaking of thoughts and opinions, we've got that question of the day, which comes from MadMick82. And he says, yo dude, are you on a pillow ad on TV? Because if not, you have a twin out there. <laughs> and actually I get told this quite a lot. Like. I had someone message me the other day, like, dude, were you in Broad Beach? That's a local town here on the Gold Coast. And I said, no. He said, oh man, I saw someone who looked exactly like you. So I'm, I guess I must just have that common face, like a Ryzen 5 3600. You know, it's, it's just, it's what people see all the time. Or we can put a 10100 over my face, but I do consider myself more towards a six core in my efficiency and processing power. That's just uh, how I've seen things in the past. Anyway, if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content and you want to see it the moment it drops, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.